Warning, this video contains rude sounds. Hello everybody, Food here. Welcome to Eat Straight and Jones. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Also, if you want to know when the latest video is about to be released, please subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. Bye everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome to Illustrator Jones once again. <laughs> okay, uh, this is what we're going to be doing today. It's not a scribble sketch episode. Um, let me know if you prefer that to this. This is my new sketchbook. Uh, it's my old one, and I've been writing uh, Seamus Gumshoe's story. Well, I've written three of them so far and drawn them. This is the first page of uh, the first book and uh, this is the Amazing Adventures of Seamus Gumshoe Anyway, that's the, th that's the second book that is, so you can see all the little drawings Yeah, that's, that's, that's the second book and, and the third book as well which uh, gets very exciting towards the end All oh, uh, action, action Aye, so that's the, th the, th the second and third book in there. This is the new. Ex I did all this with Posca, if you're wondering, and I did cover it with uh, Mod Podge, but didn't go to the edges with it, and I should have done because it looks a bit odd. Mod, odd Mod Podge. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's a fuggle. You can get those in town, can't you? Uh, I've got a few of these fuggles. I like those. Anyway. Uh, that's that schedule. Yeah, so this is the one we're going to be starting on. Or oh, we've all I've already started on it. I will show you. There it is in in its colour. There you go. And so that's the black and white. Then I've scanned it in on the computer. Uh, and that's it's printed out on 120 G MS, I think. Uh, paper, not watercolour paper, but I'll show you in a minute how to tape it down to stop it buckling and uh, wrinkling up. Yeah, and those are the other drawings. So, if you look here, there's that one. It's coloured in. Uh, and there's that one, coloured in. And that one, coloured in. So you're getting a sneak peek of the book. Now I haven't used Copic pens because I wanted to show you that you don't have to have, you know, they're expensive, got to admit, alcohol barkers, and not everybody's got that kind of money to buy them, have they? And it was years ago when I bought them. I was a bit flush then. Not like no. Anyway, um, yeah, so those are the coloured ones. And we're going to be colouring in... That's the one we should be colouring in. That one there, so I'm going to have a look for that. Here they all are printed out. Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the one I want. There you go. So now, I can, you can see that, you know, it, it's nicer blown up. And when it's reduced, it'll tighten up as well when it's scanned in. Uh, there you go. So now, I'll show you... Just use, this is a piece of MDF. Uh, you can get this from B&Q. Uh, I've cut it down to this size because it comes in bigger sheets than this. Uh, then I've sanded it down and then I've covered it with PVA glue. And then what that does, you hear that? Makes it rough and also waterproof. But it makes it rough so that your masking tape can stick to it. So you don't get you see so your masking tape will stick to that now see and it won't move so to stop it wrinkling if I painted straight onto that paper there it would wrinkle and buckle because the water would soak in and it would you know it will do it to some degree if you stretch it down like that there you go put it on nice and tight Stretch it down. I'm stretching it down so that I don't get any 
waves in the paper. And then I found this out from the first one I did. One with a rocket, which was a bit slightly wrinkly, is to do it also on the edges here. And that will prevent it from buckling. There you go. So, here's my paintbrush. I use this for everything. It's just one of uh, these I normally use for inking. And I emptied it of ink, I washed it all out. And as you can tell, I've used it to death. Filled it up with water. And uh, brilliant. It's lasted me for years. And the nib is still quite good, you know. It's not bad at all. So now we've got to make all this... Um, we've got to paint all this now, so... Now, I thought, yes, because not everybody's got Copic markers, but most people, you can get a cheap packet of watercolour paints from Range or somewhere like that, or Hobbycraft. Um, and, they, you know, that's what, that's what I'm going to use today. So just to show you that, you know, there are other ways of colouring in, and it still looks all right. Now, this is white paper, really white. That's why it looks so bright on here. If you use watercolour paper, sometimes it can be a little bit creamy coloured. So anyway, here we go. Alright everybody, here we go. Painting with watercolours. Now, I haven't done this before on the, the channel, I don't think. Nope. So, adding some blue. <laughs> Because these scenes are at night time uh, and, you know, you don't use so many colours. Try and keep it muted, but with lots of blue acting as shadows on your drawing. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Adding all the shadow new bits and then I'll add colour in over it later. It's taken me years to figure this out. <laughs> Everybody else is probably going, already know that, you Wally. Honestly, how slow are you? Yeah, very slow. Yeah, just adding all the shadows. It's quite nice, this. I, I quite like doing this. It's good. Colouring in. It could, it could make a good colouring book, couldn't it? A story book that's a colouring book as well. Sounds alright, doesn't it? Sounds like a good idea. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. I wonder if that would work. Anyway, how is everybody? I hope you're okay. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Thank you so much to all the uh, subscribers out there that keep coming back and watching me every single time I put a video out. You're brilliant. You really are. And you're very kind. <laughs> watching this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more subscribers eventually. Maybe one day the, it, it'll go above 50. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Why not, Will? I, I, got, I got a cough. No, it's not. It's called hay fever. It's blinking awful out there. It's so hot. And there's lots and lots of pollen about. And, oh, dear. Cough, cough. Terrible. Yeah, it is yellow, so I've made him like a goldy colour. I quite like this robot. He's a, he's a he's a nice character. He's a friendly character, and he befriends um, Seamus. He was only a little boy in this scene, if you notice. He's only little. Don't hurt me, Arch. I'm only little. What was that from? That was from something, I can't remember where it was. What was that from? Where did I hear that before? But yeah. So it's just... Uh, added. Inside, you see, it's not night time, obviously. Inside there's light. And there's, you know, all the colours are showing inside, so... Transitioning from outside, which is a bluey kind of tint to everything, to inside, which is more... Um, full colour. Although I do use a lot of blue in the background behind the robot. I will do it in a minute. Uh, is it me or that as you get older you don't sleep as much? I don't know. 
I'll wake up at the crack of blinking dawn. And then for the rest of the day, I'm absolutely knackered. Or as my dad would say, knackered. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the KR-15 robot. Um, Seamus has snuck onto the rocket. He's managed to break into a high security military base and uh, break into the rocket. <laughs> How he's done this, we don't know, but he's done it anyway. And he sneaked into where the robot is kept. So this is where he's going to hide so that he can join his dad on this top secret mission. Of course it doesn't go to plan, does it? No. It doesn't go to plan at all. It all goes bear shaped And Seamus, the poor little lad, gets into a load of trouble. Especially with his daddy. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's where that story's going. So if this is not interesting, if you don't like this, please let me know. I will go back to doing the scribble sketches. But it's just I'd like to try and change it up a bit, as they say. <laughs> change it up a bit. Yeah. It is so hot outside, it's ridiculous. Here's me, in, in, in the office, with the fan going, if you're wondering what that noise is behind me. It's the fan. I can't, I can't breathe in here otherwise. It's so hot in the house. It's so hot. Absolutely boiling. Yeah, so the background I've added uh, lots of blue to make it look metallic. And there goes my mad dog chasing birds again. In this weather. In this weather she'll chase birds. Stupid animal. Anyway, yeah, so just adding some shadow because his suit is not all red, it's got white on it, so I use the blue to, uh, you know, to create shadows for him. But that's a phthalo blue that I'm using. Um, to be honest, it's the only blue I use because I just love the blue. Phthalo blue. Or, as I originally called it, phthalo blue. <laughs> Thalo blue. Yeah, I don't think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's pronounced Thalo blue. But um, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that one is a Dela and Rowney uh, colour, not a Windsor and Newton. And I've noticed, I think, that the Windsor and Newton one isn't quite as vibrant. So I might look into getting uh, another Dela and Rowney um, version, because it's a beautiful blue. Look at all this plugging for all these company, art companies. Don't get a penny from it, you know. No, not a penny. But no, it's, you, you need to know which ones you want to get. Or you can get... Um, oh, I forgot what they're called now. Oh, there's a certain paint set which is very cheap in uh, the range. I can't remember. I'll, I'll let you know what um, what the name of the uh, the make is. They're in tubes. But uh, yeah, you can pick up watercolor quite cheap now. Never used to years ago. When I was a kid, they were blinking expensive. Ridiculous prices. Not sure what kind of uh, stuff you get uh, in the US because I know some of the peop uh, my um, subscribers are from America. Yes. And I, I'm not sure what shops you have over there. So it's all a bit of a mystery to me. My wife has been to America. Um, the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia she's uh, uh, been to years ago, just before we were married. Well over 25 years ago now. But I have, I've never been. No. Not very good at travelling, me. They barely get me to go down to Dorset or Devon. <laughs> I have to be tranquilised to do that. <laughs> Much to my wife's horror. 
Yeah, it does look like night time, doesn't it? Above the um, in the blue, I will add a bit of colour to it later, just to you know cheer it up slightly. Because that top bit on his uh, bits of bits of him are in red. Anyway, so have I seen any good films recently? Yes, I have. There is a movie on. So, oh, is it YouTube? What did I watch the other day? Oh, do you know? I can't remember what it was called. No, it's gone. I watch so many films on YouTube now. It's it's my main go-to channel to watch uh, movies. There are so many on there. Old, the old movies. I don't like the new ones. I much prefer the old ones. It's, uh, the old ones are great. The old horror movies from the 1950s and 60s. They're brilliant. Oh, there's, I tell you what, there's one film that scared the living daylights out of me when I was a kid, which I mentioned last video, called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Anyway, it turns out, I think, that the chap, one of the, one of the subscribers to this channel, um, lives in the area where Boggy Creek, you know, the monster lives. My wife goes to me, it's not real, you know. I said, it is. It is. They wouldn't have made a film out of it if it wasn't real. Honestly. Of course it's real. Scared the living daylights out of me, that film. Everywhere I went when I was a kid, you know, if there was woods, dark woods or something, you know, I'd look into it and go, oh, The Legend of Boggy Creek. Scared the daylights out of me. But they used to, the old films. I tell you what used to frighten me when I was a little kid uh, in the 70s was called um, Space 1999. The first series, not the second one. That used to terrify me, that did. I watched that again recently, the series. I think that's on... Oh, I forgot where I watched it now. It could have been on YouTube, actually. Oh, such a good series, the first one. The models by Jerry Anderson are absolutely brilliant. They're wonderful. Wait a minute. What's that smell? I can... There's a funny pong in here. Oh no, I recognise that smell. No, it's... Hello everybody. Welcome back to me. It's all about me, nothing to do with him. Honestly, don't listen to him. He's a grumpy old git. Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's telling you how to draw, can't even draw himself. Dear me, I don't know why you bother watching this rubbish. I'm the best thing on this show, yeah, on this channel. It's me, I make everybody laugh. It's just me, I'm third, I'm brilliant, everybody loves me. Sniff this, you moaning minnie. <laughs> hey, well, you, you, how, how do you do that? How do you block me out so I can't say anything? Nobody can hear me. Shouting and screaming, get off me telly, get off me screen, you filthy little urchin. Oh, did he make rude sounds again? He did, didn't he? Oh, I'm sorry. Rude sounds. See, that's why I have to put the warning at the beginning, because there's some, you know, sensitive people out there. I don't want to hear rude sounds like that, so I have to go put a warning up. Anyway, we're getting on with the drawing. So, what do you think of the watercolours? Do you like it? I quite like the watercolour effect. It's, I can, you know, it, um, I do like the Copic pens. They're very nice, but they're really expensive, so... I'd understand if you get a bit frustrated going, oh, it's all right for him, you know, he's got all those lovely pens. Well, it's taken me years to collect them together, though, that's the thing. <laughs> but yeah, for kids, if your kids are watching this, you see, the watercolours are a cheaper option. And, y and yet, if you do it on nice bright white paper, and you tape it up so that it doesn't wrinkle, it looks good. It looks really good. Not just good, but good enough. It's north of the border. 
Oh, I watched this new video. What was it? The Mandalorian turned into um, Grogu. That was very good. He's excellent. And um, Bill Making Stuff does uh, has got a new video where he does uh, little characters, scratch builds some characters for his uh, for his planet. Good storytelling, good video ed editing. He's brilliant at it. Much better than the rubbish I put out. <laughs> oh, he's a good artist too. Really is. Now if that went on a bit dark, that paint there on his face, and I thought, oh no. But then, always remember, with watercolour, um, it dries 30% lighter once it's dried. So you won't have the, you know, just keep that in mind. Don't panic. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. So let me know if you're drawing. Send me in your drawings. You know, if uh, you're enjoying watching me draw and it's inspiring you to have a go, send them in on uh, YouTube. Or I'm on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, send them, send them in to me there if you want to. I'd love to see what you're doing. And also, you know, write in on the comments below. Make a comment. Let me know what you think. Some do. We ha I have had a few comments, which is nice. I do answer back, by the way. I answer back to the comments. But I think that's important. Oh, Posca. Posca, Posca, Posca. Here we go, here we go. I like this bit. Oh, no, he's not using Posca. What's he doing? Honestly, yeah, he's going to add Posca now. So, yeah, you see what is? Do you see the black shadow? Now I make the white line go into the black shadow, and that gives it a slightly more metallic look, as if the light is just glinting off that line going around the edges of his arm. And uh, yeah, I, I do it on his bag. Here we go. Look, see. Do it on his helmet. So it's using it to define some of the shadows as well as, uh, you know, adding highlights. You don't have to do that. You could, could leave it in shadow, which is perfectly fine. I quite like... Uh, yeah, there you go. Look. Just showing the outline of it slightly catching the light. There you go. On his legs, look. Back of his legs. Just, it's just a little highlight thing goes right around with his arm mm, I'm trying to think what that film was I watched the other day I can't remember what it was called now anyway was it called The Frozen Dead could have been well, I can't remember The Frozen Dead very good Nazis in the 1950s have frozen the, uh, some of the um, the Nazi party leaders and they're trying to bring them back to life. <laughs> it's dead good, that. I like that. There's nothing in it. It's, uh, you know, it's old. It's good, though. Excellent film. Yeah, there you go. See, there's that line. It just... I don't know. See what it does to the, the drawing? Just an idea, it might help, if you know, it, 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 I quite like the effect it gives you. You know, if you, you might think, Chris, that looks terrible. Stop it. Stop misleading us with this rubbish. No, it's alright, it's not too bad. Yeah, the Posca pen, it's, it's an essential part of your kit if you're going to start drawing. It really is essential. They're not expensive, they're only about £3.50 a pen, not too expensive. And they last quite a long time, I've got to admit. You know, you only need a white one, really, to do the highlights. Yeah, look, you see, it just, it's just adding a little sheen to the yellow. The Posca pen there. 
There's like little glimmers of light bouncing off him. Yeah, it's good. It's a, it's a great little tool that is the Posca. I think it's brilliant that the you know I'm so glad they brought them out. But these the Uni, Uni the company Uni. I'm not too sure who uh, forgotten who it is now. They actually are. Oh, they brought out some pens and different things. They're brilliant. Oh, here we go. Look, top of the page. Give him a bit of highlight now. I like that picture actually. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that one. And that skin didn't turn out too dark. See, it did. It did dry quite uh, light. You see what I'm doing there? I'm in the dark, but I'm, see, adding the glass to the to the to the uh, the helmet. A little bit of highlight there. I was quite, I was quite chuffed with that. <laughs> uh, for somebody that doesn't plan much, as as um, Bob Ross used to say, "Happy little accidents." So we're coming to the end of our video now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it'll be scribble sketch next time, so don't worry if you think, "Oh, I don't want to sit through another one of these." But thank you to all my subscribers. You're very kind for sticking with me, and thank you for all the messages. And I will see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Illustrator Jones just wanted to say a huge thank you to Duck on Mayeth and the arty side of space for supporting Illustrator Jones on Patreon. If you would consider supporting Illustrator Jones on Patreon, you will be able to access members-only content. Thank you for your kind support. <laughs>